Let's use matrices to solve this. So, by the way, changing this into a matrix isn't too bad. So it's kind of like we're just taking the coefficients like this, since these are already in columns. If we had to manipulate them, then we would, but we don't in this case, and that's great. So I'm just gonna rewrite this as an augmented matrix with the coefficients of x in the first column, the coefficients of y in the second column, and the answers can go in the third column. Bam. So I've got this first row, this is row one, and I've got my second row, row two. And uh, well, we kind of just use elimination to solve these, okay? So for example, if I was going to, I mean, take a look at that, those first two equations, not the matrices, but the, those two equations. What variable would you want to eliminate first? Y. Probably the y, right? Because they're smaller numbers, I assume. Um, but what would you do to eliminate the y's? There we go. So that's all I'm going to do is I'm going to take the top row and multiply it by, I'll say, four, right? Four times <coughs> row one. And my bottom row, I'm going to multiply by a negative three so that they'll cancel out, right? I'm not sure if they really care if you show that for your work. It's good for you to see, though. So for four times row one, I'm just going to multiply all those numbers by four. So four times nine is 36. Four times three is 12. And four times three is 12. On that second row, I've got negative 3 times 8, which is negative 24. Negative 3 times 4, which is negative 12. And negative 3 times 12, which is negative 36. Different way. So if we were to eliminate the y's, uh, let's just do it in the bottom row. Not that we have to. We could do it in the top one. But let's say I'm going to, uh, so I'm going to take uh, row 2. And if I add, I guess I can put that behind it. Maybe that would help. If I take row one and add it to row two, it'll give me a new row two. Okay. Now, right now, I didn't do anything to that top row, even though we could. So I got 36, 12, and 12. But when I take the row one and add it to row two, so I got 36 plus 24, which is 12. 12 plus negative 12 is zero. And 12 plus negative 36 is 24. Ah, dang it. Thank you. Negative 24. And it may be helpful for you guys to realize that this bottom row right now is 12x equals negative 24. I mean, if you saw that equation, what would you do? Yeah, you divide both sides by 12, right? That's what we're going to do in the matrix. I'm going to take that second row, row 2, and divide it by 12. And this is how that will look now. So I got in that bottom row, I got 12 divided by 12 is 1. 0 divided by 12 is 0. That's good. And negative 24 divided by 12 is negative 2. And my top row, again, I didn't really do anything with. 36, 12, and 12. At this point, from that bottom row, we know that x is negative 2. And we could have figured that out from this equation. But uh, since I know x is negative 2, I have no problems with you guys stopping right here. And that's kind of the Gaussian elimination, if I remember right. Not that it matters. But <clears throat> yeah, I could go back to this equation right here. Replace x with negative 2 and solve for y. Again, you don't have to, all right? But I'm going to do it with matrices just, just for practice purposes. So right now, my bottom row is that uh, 1, 0, negative 2. Now, if I, if I have that, which I do, I can take negative 36 times row 1, uh, 2 rather, sorry, 
And if I add that to row one, I eliminate, wait, yeah, I will have eliminated the X's from the top row, okay? So what this means is that I'm gonna take one, multiply it by negative 36, and then add it to this 36. You see what that does? So I have my bottom row, one, zero, negative two, but it creates a zero right there for the X's. Zero times negative 36 is zero, that's very nice. And plus 12 would be 12. Negative 2 times negative 36 is uh, 72. Plus 12 is uh, 84. Those are big numbers, but they're still doable. So all I would do now is take row 1 and divide it by 12 so that this number here will be a 1. And that would give me what my y is. Because right now I have 12y equals 84. And so to solve this equation, you divide both sides by 12. I need more space though. So when I do that, I got 0, 1, and uh, 7. And then 1, I guess it was blue. 1, 0, negative 2. All right, your equation should look something, uh, not your equation, but your matrix should look something like this. The top row tells us that the answer, x equals se uh, 7, and the bottom one tells us that y is negative 2. How can y be negative 2 and x is negative 2 up there? Uh, yeah, let me, let me replace that. I apologize. So this is 1y equals 7. Oh. And the bottom one, thank you for pointing that out. That's uh, x equals negative 2. So the ordered pair would be negative 2, 7. But again, you shouldn't stop there. You should press forward with, uh, well, with the calculator. That'd be nice.